inside. Take now from the Hail Mary. Once again, the guy's got his hand out, he's jabbing away. Now you start holding it out. Now here come that Hail Mary punch. And you came in here. What can he do? He can come with the back hand, or he can spin around this way. Or, like I said before, he can try to back out. Right? And give him space. We're going to do this real slow and real smooth. He punch. He come with the Hail Mary. You in here. Easiest takedown. You've seen it a million times. I'm quite sure you watch one of the Ultimate Challenge videos, one of the Gracie videos. You've seen it somewhere. Million times. You get him in here. You just lock him up tight. Turn your foot in. Sit the man down. Now you're here, which they call, quote unquote, the mounted position. It's a simple take that. It's no big deal. No big deal at all. All you have to do is let the man fire off, come in here, keep the head tight. See, if you pull the head off, he can come back with that spitting elbow in your face, back with the forward. You keep the head tight, you simply put your body sideways, straight into the man. Turn your foot up this way, straight up. Straight, your foot, just flip it up. So the bottom of your foot is on the back of this thing. Sit him on his behind and just roll right over. And from here, you punish the man. I don't play. Let me tell you something which is very important, which we're going to go into next segment. Everybody talk about, oh, ground grappling, ground grappling, ground grappling is self-defense, or is the best self-defense. I don't know where you live, but I'll tell you about where I live. Okay, or where I used to live. You get on the ground with this guy. And you're playing games with this guy. Grapple, his friend Winslow is going to come and kick you in your head and bash you and stomp you. You understand? You can't, you can't spend, you can't spend 20 minutes on no ground. You can't get on no ground with no man and you guys Lock yourself into position. Here he has his hand around you. He has his, his hand around your neck. And you're trying to lock yourself into position for 25 minutes. And here comes Winslow again and punching and kicking. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. And don't let nobody, don't let nobody, nobody tell you that you can get away with that. Only time you get away with that is if it's you and a guy, maybe in some secluded area where you might have one to five minutes maximum. And if you ever had a fight, three minutes is a lifetime in a real street fight on the ground. Don't let nobody tell you that's self-defense. That's not self-defense. That's sports. Just like judo. That's sports. Sports jujitsu. Okay? It has its times. It has its moments. Yes. But you don't get it into your head that you're going to get on any ground with any man and hold him and hold him and hold him until you get the position. Because you're going to be a dead man. You're going to be a dead man. There's a difference. And I want to say this where they say, if I'm not mistaken, it's 95%, 95% of self of, of fights end up on the ground. That's what they say. That's what you hear. 95% of fights end up on the ground. You know what? That is true. 95% of fights do end up on the ground. But 95% of self-defense situations never see the ground. And I'll explain myself real fast before I go into the next technique. Now I'm going to show you what I'm talking about when I said 95% of self-defense situations never end up on the ground. Here is your basic scenario, more or less. Someone's in front of you. Now they're in front of you. And you telling me about how 95% of fights end up on the ground. Now, if we start fighting, he puts his hand up, and I put his hand up, sure, he can go down, we can grapple each other, and we can go to the ground. Self-defense situations don't end up on the ground. I'm looking at him. We're having words. We're having a discussion. I'm like, what are you talking about? What do you mean? What? What are you, what are you, what are you stupid? Then I do that. Boom. Now, grapple. Grapple. Where's your grappling? So you tell me how this ends up on the ground. You end up on the ground. You understand? You can't grapple. You can't grapple. It's ridiculous. Watch again. You're here again. 
you may have some words with a guy. You and the guy may do something, you and the guy may do something, and you may argue, so you may throw a few blows at each other. What, 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 what? Oh, get the hell out of here. Yo, come on, come on, come on, come on, grapple. Come on, grapple. Show me, lunge for the legs, go ahead, come on. You understand how it don't make sense? You try to grab me, I cut you up. You try to grapple, grapple, I cut your legs up. Anything you try to do, I'm gonna do you. I'll stand there like this and let you put your arms around me. Cause I wanna put this all in your ribs and in your back. You can't grapple. You can't grapple. That's why you have to make sense. 95% of self-defense situations never end up on the ground. 95% of fights may end up on the ground. What I teach is self-defense. Big, big difference. And don't let nobody fool you. Don't you go out there thinking that you are learning self-defense and you're spending, get down, Sister James, you're spending all your time on a mat in this position talking about, okay, now I'm going to shift from this position, now I'm going to shift to here and do all that nonsense, and you, that's self-defense training. You people are buying into that nonsense up that people are trying to sell you. You're going with the fact you're not using your common sense, right? So what happened? If a Ninja Power Ranger movies become popular again, we all going to start doing Taekwondo? Come on, people, use your head, use your sense. It don't make sense. Basic common sense, either it does or it doesn't. And self-defense is self-defense, a standstill situation. Give me your money, give me your jewelry, give me your gold if you're a woman, give me your body. That ain't ending up on no ground. If we fight, if we push off, and we go into this, now that's a fight. And if you go into this, you wasn't trained properly. Because no self-defense person want to change a standstill situation where you can utilize the element of surprise by humbling yourself, by begging, by pleading, by positioning yourself, by trying to calm this man down and then take advantage of the strike that you may have and you could use as opposed to pushing off and getting into a stance or getting into some kind of fighting position. The goal is not to fight. If you're trained and all you want to do is fight, people, you're in for a battle every time. Every single time you go out there and try to defend yourself, and all you know is fighting, you're in for a battle. So you can spar all you want. You could be the greatest kickboxer in the world. You could be the greatest Muay Thai person in the world. It don't make a difference. You're fighting, you're fighting, you're fighting, you're fighting. You're not using any type of strategy, any type of self-defense training. And sooner or later, I may be one hell of a, uh, 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 full contact kick fighter, one hell of a boxer, one hell of a Thai boxer, one hell of a Kayako Shin man. But how is that gonna work against Scott, John, Winslow, all of you come in at one time. How the hell am this gonna work against this? You understand? What do you got now? Where are you gonna fight now? Your fighting goes out the window. You gotta understand that there are at least a thousand murders committed in this city, in New York City and it's done with some kind of weapon, gun, a knife, most of the time a knife, weapon of choice. That's why we're going into knife training right after I show you these two other basic closing the distance techniques. We're going right into some knife defense, okay, that makes sense because edge weapon is weapon of choice. You see what they said about the high schools? Box cutting, weapon of choice, 99 cents and you get 10 extra blades. Can't beat that, okay? That's what I'm telling you. You got to learn how to deal with the real deal and get out of this fantasy stuff about doing forms and doing all kinds of things. People, hey, you may not like what I'm saying. It may hit home to you in, in a bad way where you say, well, who the hell this guy think he is talking about uh, my ground grappling and not self-defense and, and karate is not self-defense and this and that and that and that. Who, who do he think he is? It is what it is. If you like what I'm saying or you don't like what I'm saying, the bottom line is that katas and all type of those type of basic old fashioned traditional training is not for our society. It wasn't designed for our society and it don't work in our society, okay? It holds you back. You practice 10 hours worth of forms to get it right. 
put 10 hours into form. Meanwhile, the guy in prison is doing 10 hours worth of pumping iron, pumping push-ups. He's building himself up in many different ways, going over fighting strategies, how to slit your throat, how to rip you off different. He's spending 10 hours on combat training while you're spending 10 hours on form. While you're looking pretty, that person's affected. Get back to the technique of closing the distance and what can you do. We're going to finish it up real quick, then we're going to go into some real, real, what we call self-defense drills with a blade. He's defense against an edge weapon. That man throw that mighty hook punch again. When he threw that hook and you came in here, like I showed you, you can come from here, sit it down, and get into the mounted position. But when you get into the mounted position with this guy, when you take him down and you <laughs> roll over to him, you get him down fast, stomp on his head, stomp on his head real fast, and you get back up, and you get back up. You don't stay there playing no games. Snap him, strike him, stomp on his head, punish him, drop your knee, punish him, drop your knee, punish him, drop, stomp on his ankle, and then you get out of there. You don't stand on no floor wasting no time. I took him down, I went down, I got up, and I got out. Other option, when he came with that hook punch over here, if the man has here, don't even waste no time. Give me somebody in here. John, please. Listen. You threw that wild hook punch, and a guy came around. Watch this. And the guy have a little bit of hair. You see what happened? You reach over. You grab the hair. That snapped that neck. Like, look, at, look at what happens to the head. Here, very fast. I grabbed the hair. Pulled the head back. I got the throat right here. I turned his head. I got his ear. I'll bite his ear off his head. I'll bite it. Right off his head. Pull his hair back. I dig in his eyes. I come back into position. Focus the eye, the throat, the elbow. I take it all. Right there. I don't play no games. I don't play no games. Get in. Close the distance. Take advantage of the man as fast as you possibly can. Without wasting time. If you're going to take him down, take him down and get back up. If you're going to make that motion and you're going to drop this guy and take him down, take him down, strike, strike, stop, and get back up. If he try to get back up, hey, hey, come on, hey, right there, his vision, his vision. When he try to get back up, I don't go for this. He's on one knee, I go for the vision, the nose, the eyes, the vision. Is this killing him? Is this crippling him for life? No, maybe. Hey, in a heated battle, heated situation, are you really that concerned? Are you really that concerned? You're trying to make it home to your family. This may permanently damage, and it may not. A piece of dust is all you need for him to look away. So when you do this, that's more than enough, more than enough for you to do what you need. Pop his eardrum. You don't play any games with it. If he come with a wild hook punch, Winslow, please Winslow, please, this. If he come with a wild hook punch from the, uh, the lead hand, left hand, he's left-handed. Switch, switch. So he's jabbing off that left hand because he's a left-hander, right? And then we did before, when he came off with the wild hook from the back, we showed you what to do from here, right? Now, let's say he comes over with a looping left. You see? Now you can take him down this way here, or look at what you got here, people. Look at your shot. Here he comes. Remember, down, boom. I shoved this in. He's coming. He's coming. Here come that looping left. Boom. Right here. I can grab again. People, I can shot. Boom. Shot right into the thigh. Right across there. Again, pull down from the eye. I can come around. I can do the takedown. Roll him into the mounted position. I can come over here. I can drop my knee into his thigh. Whatever it takes. But the whole key is, if you want to break it down, is... Do not get into a fighting situation, fighting situation with the guy in the street. Because once you do this, people, it evens the odds. If you come back here, then it don't matter. Sooner or later, you're going to have to work your way into a position where your strikes are effective. And I'm telling you, if a guy got rhythm and a guy know how to box, oh man, you're in a world of trouble. Because if he ever catch you with that jab, your knees are going to buckle, and when your knees buckle, that's it. And people, let's get realistic. 
How many of you martial artists who've been practicing martial arts? When the last time you got punched in the face? When the last time you got punched in the face? When? Answer that question to yourself. When the last time you got punched in your face? When the last time somebody said, boom, punch you in your face in training? When the last time you got punched in your belly and body in training? Huh? When the last time that happened? Chances are, a lot of you have been training for many, many years and never took a punch, never took a hit. But yet you think you're effective when you go outside in the street. You really believe that you're going to be effective outside there. I'm not trying to put nobody down. I'm just trying for us to understand what the real deal is and for us not to go out there and be foolish and let our ego get carried away with us and think that we can go out there and kick all this behind. People, let's get real. Boxes take punches to the face and to the body every day in practice. That is what I'm trying to tell you. In practice, a guy who's go, who just started boxing, he goes, he hits the heavy bags. He works the speed bag. He does push-ups, jumping jacks, sit-ups, medicine ball training, and then he goes into the ring, and then he goes rounds. The average martial artist, six months, one year, seven, all, what do we do? What do we do? We do forms. And after we do our forms, okay, we do weapons forms. And after we do the weapons forms, we do more stance and more training and kicking into the wind. And after we do that, we do point fighting. We do kamite. We get back here and we, we we'll do kamite. And then when we get tangled up, hey, are you ready? Where's the, where's the contact in there? Where's the punch in the face? And we all know we got what we call Kayako Shin, full contact karate. I'm not taking, I'm not trying to hop on them or say anything bad about them. I'm just telling it like it is. They do full knockdown karate. Oh, believe me, you get kicked in your legs and thighs, that ain't no joke. I got senseis here, and I got students here, they kick you across your legs, yo, you going down. That hurt, that sucker hurt, don't let nobody fool you. This coming across, bang, that hurts. Sure, it'll take you right out. But this, when they coming off, and they're doing that, and they're going uh, to each other's chest, here, here, to each other's chest and legs, they don't hit the face. So what happened now when they get outside and they go to here, here, bam, bam, and then some guy who hits the face goes, boom, they're going down. They're going down because psychologically he never felt it before. So I hope you picked up something from this segment of defense against a boxer. So you can understand how dangerous it really, really, really is. Okay? It's no joke. It's very, very serious. I'd like to give, uh, I'd like the guys who gave me a hand on this to come in here, please. Or the guys gave me a hand on this so before we move on to the next segment. Okay? Uh, move in. We have Adam, who was in the suit before. All right? We have John. We have Winslow. Should I say Winslow? We have Sensei Cirillo. Sensei James. And Sensei Scott, okay, usually you see me doing a lot of uh, techniques and stuff with Scott, usually in the other videos, but he's on the injured reserve today, so we're giving him a break, all right? But uh, I hope something of what we did didn't offend you. And if we offended you, we didn't mean to offend you, but we're just trying to bring it to light. People, everything changes. Everything changes. Everything. We are not cooking in brick ovens anymore. We're not using rotary phones anymore. Cars with the carburetors are gone. You understand? The computer age is here. Not only before you had the big computers, now you got the handheld computers, now you got cellular phone, now you got beepers. Everything changes. But martial arts, so far, the only thing hasn't changed. Stayed the same and people are trying to get you to buy into it that, oh, it just has to go on forever. Because it's tradition. Yes, keep the tradition, but still do what's necessary for today's time to save yourself in today's society. So I hope you don't take no offense to what I said. I'm just trying to bring some stuff to light. Okay? And we're going to move on now into our next segment, which is defense, defending yourself against an edge weapon, knife, training. And we're going to pick that up. Okay, thank you very much. Listen.